Welcome to the Take the Grant Ready Challenge. This is for U.S. nonprofits. If you are a charitable nonprofit in the United States, then this webinar is for you. My name is Phil Johncock. I'm the founder and lead faculty for the Grants Academy, and I'm glad that you're watching this particular video. A little bit about me. Um, I wrote my first grant in 1988. In 1997, I designed the very first online class in grant writing, and in 2001, I created a college grant certification program in which the students received over $1.2 billion in grants in just two and a half years. I'm an approved trainer with the Grant Professional Association. I'm grant professional certified. I have a 95% success rate, I've written 70 grants, and over $10 million dollars have been received in grants, but my students, again, have made a lot more than I have, and that's been a major focus of mine over the last uh, 30 years. I've authored 35 books, and a lot of those have been about grants. So I'm excited that you're here, and let's get into what the uh, Grant Ready Challenge is all about. It's a non-competitive contest that has a deadline, and everybody wins. You win, your nonprofit wins, funders win, the clients you serve win, and you win by being the first one to bring this game-changing tool to your agency. Your nonprofit wins because it will increase its capacity to win more grants in less time. Funders win because they get better crafted proposals, and the clients you serve win because they get more services and more help. So thank you for all that you do. And let's jump into the most important thing that most grant professionals should focus on first. What's the deadline? In this case, I want you to think about this. Usually it takes um, organizations about a week to put together um, uh, the documents that they're going to be collecting and um, complete the challenge. But some people can do it in a few days or a day even for that matter. So it's up to you what your deadline is. And I'm going to ask you at the end as part of the survey, what's your deadline? And that's really important for uh, moving forward with getting all the information that you need. So what's your deadline? Action steps. So the challenge is really about simply collecting and filing the documents that you're going to uh, you're going to see those um, on the checklists in this particular video, except for the ones that are italicized. Now you're going to get the slides with the checklist here, so don't worry about taking all the notes there. And um, you can complete the survey, and you can see the survey uh, URL. To download those, but I would suggest that you wait until after you watch the video and then you just absorb it the first time through. So when you finish the challenge, you have a chance to win some valuable prizes. First, you have a chance to win a free consultation with an assessment of your organization's grant readiness. You have uh, opportunity to win a free $25,000 or more proposal written by a student in one of the Grants Academy classes. You have a chance to win a limited edition Grant Readiness Three Ring Binder, and I only have a few of those left and will be doing uh, raffles or uh, for the people who complete this challenge to give those away. Uh, you have an opportunity to win as well as uh, a scholarship uh, to one of our online classes. So um, make sure that you collect and file the documents from the checklist, except for the italicized ones. So here's a, a little bit about my story. And my story happened back in 1988. And a client asked me to write a grant proposal for $120,000 to teach newly legalized immigrants English and citizenship skills. We were supposed to serve uh, uh, 250 in the first year, and 550 showed up on the doorstep our first week of, of uh, registration. But the, the problem was I knew absolutely nothing about grant writing, and that may be the case for you too. And it took me 100 hours to figure out how to write that first grant, and fortunately we got um, the money. Uh, unfortunately, you won't write many grants if it takes you a hundred hours uh, to complete. So something amazing happened to me after 12 years 
in the grant profession. When I finished writing proposal number 52, I looked down at my watch and you know what? The proposal only took me four hours to write. Now somehow I had gone from writing my first grant proposal in 100 hours to writing the last application in just four hours of writing and, and pulling the grant proposal together, just four hours. So I started wondering how I went from a $120,000 grant and 100 hours of work to $420,000 grant and only four hours of work. So the secret I discovered after 12 years and 52 grants is to be grant ready and have a system in place before an RFP or request for proposal from a funder ever gets announced. So whether you need $400 or $4,000 or even $400,000, this grant ready challenge really works. So why is it important to be grant ready? Well, the first reason why being grant ready is so important is that it's the best practice in the nonprofit sector. So according to Charity Navigator, accountability is an obligation or willingness by a charity to explain its action to its stakeholders. Transparency is an obligation or a willingness by a charity to publish and make available critical data about your organization. Now, generally speaking, charities or um, nonprofits with a 501c3 status that follow best practices in governance, donor relations, and related areas are less likely to engage in unethical and irresponsible activities. Now, Money for Good even says that grant-ready um, nonprofits are also the highest performing ones, and research shows that donors are willing to shift up to $15 billion to high-performing nonprofits. So some of the sources that I used to develop um, from the best practices in the nonprofit sector that I used to develop this challenge come from the Better Business Bureau, uh, Accredited Charity Program, a Charity Navigator, GuideStar Exchange, a How to Be Grant Ready book on Amazon, the National Council of Nonprofits, and the Grant Professional Certification Institute, or GYPSI. So I'm going to focus on three different um, competencies or skills that the grant or Gypsy has developed uh, to become certified because it has a specific um, skills or sub skills that are related to, to grant readiness. So if, if we were to look at competency number two for the um, a Gypsy, it's the knowledge of organizational development as it pertains to grant seeking. So the Grant Ready Challenge addresses the first four sub-skills of competency number two. So it really means identifying methods of coordinating an organization's grant development uh, with the various available funding streams. The second one has to do with grant seeking. The, the third one has to do with uh, grant readiness to obtain funding for and specific uh, projects you might have. And then the last one is specifically uh, practices that advance your grant readiness. And so this grant ready challenge is one of the, the, the top practices that I found um, uh, to use for organizations with the 501c3 nonprofit. And, and just at the bottom, the, the GPC exam is independently administered electronically by Gypsy. And to be eligible, you have to have at least five successful grants under your belt. Um, as well as um, at least three to five years in the last five or three to five years in the grant field uh, in the last five to seven years. So um, that is something I suggest that you go check out um, at um, the Gypsy website. But we're going to look at two other competencies that are part of the GPC exam. And this is 20% of the multiple choice section is around crafting proposals. And specifically, I'd like to draw your attention to um, two of the skills, number three, that, that is how you can 
develop some project management strategies for submitting high quality and complete proposals on time. And then number five has to do with the grant narrative elements or ideas that are required in most proposals. Now, if you look at a competency number nine, which is really the writing sample that you take as part of the GPC, you know, your grant professional certification exam, 20% of the sample, I mean, that's 20% of the score comes from your sample writing, and you need to organize your ideas appropriately and follow formatting guidelines. And so that's what we teach in our Grant Pro 101 course is the number one um, pop, most popular grant writing format in the world. But in this case, what we're looking at is how to collect the documents from the narrative that will help you put together a proposal more quickly. So the second uh, reason why grant readiness and being a grant ready is important is it allows your organization to build its capacity faster. So here I've got a quote from the uh, Grant Professionals Association website and says, if you're looking for assistance with grants for your organization, um, you know, if you need extra capacity, then uh, the Grant Professionals Association can help you locate consultants who can assist you. But they suggest that before you search for a grant consultant, and I agree with them, that we recommend that you evaluate your grant readiness and determine if you're ready to pursue grant funding. So some of the key elements are uh, the documentation of your nonprofit status, your operating budget, audited financial statements, program evaluation plans, and recent IRS 990 filings. So the third uh, reason why being grant ready is important is there is no more waiting time uh, necessary um, to wait until the last minute. So 80% of the grant proposal narrative elements like the problem statement or agency introduction um, and the attachments that you might need can be compiled right now before anyone ever sees a funder's request for proposal. Now, the number four uh, reason why it's important is that you'll be ready for fast turnarounds, especially at this historic time when the federal uh, grant money, like the $1.9 trillion from the American Rescue Plan, is starting to make its way down to cities, uh, states, and counties. Is in this example, where I live in Oregon, Project Turnkey was um, a program created by the state legislature in Oregon using the federal COVID money, and it allows nonprofits to buy hotels and convert them into non-congregate shelters. And um, uh, for COVID-related uh, um, uh, reasons, but also to help displaced persons from the Almeida fire that started in Ashland, where I live, on September 8th, uh, 2020. Over 2,000 houses burned and over 3,500 people lost their home. So I heard about this Project Turnkey on a Sunday on Facebook, and I got the green light on Monday and submitted the application on Wednesday within 24 hours. And the result was a funded grant to buy a $2.55 million ho hotel, this uh, Redwood um, Inn motel in Medford, Oregon, at, as uh, to help the displaced persons from the Almeida fire. So a lot of COVID-related money is now available and or will be very soon to help people, businesses, and communities recover. And um, reason number four to be grant ready is for fast turnarounds when that money and especially new resources and short deadlines are there. So let's take a look at another example um, of the federal uh, funding trickling down to local government. And this example comes from uh, Clark County, uh, Southern Nevada. So the American Rescue Plan uh, was passed or signed into law in March of 2021. I 
I saw on YouTube uh, a video of a community meeting that took place on the 4th of August, 2021. And in that, and I quote here, commissioners, um, county commissioners are looking for f- to focus assistance, so some of that $440 million on housing, infrastructure, health care, small business programs, and more. Uh, but we want to hear what concerned citizens um, uh, are interested in regarding these areas of distress in communities across Car- uh, Clark County. Now, if you look at the video, uh, just the image there, you'll see 129 views. That's not very many, but uh, this is an example of where the money is not going. Uh, the information about the money being available is sometimes being pushed out on YouTube or other uh, social media sites. So it's not the same with other uh, grant funding. So it's important to understand this and to be alert for the prospects for funding and being grant ready will allow you to be ready when announcements and when information about um, uh, money that is available for your community um, and how to access that. The fifth reason why being grant ready is important is it allows you to collect right now what funders want to see in your proposals. So I have these two questions. What specific docs do you think that um, prospective funders like to to see or what are they likely going to ask for? And, And which of these documents can you start collecting up front right now? So research shows us that most foundations, private foundations, Um, they have certain things in common. They are looking for similar documents that largely fall into four key categories. Governance, like annual reports, list of board members, etc. Financial or operating uh, budgets, uh, IRS Form 990. Um, Legal, IRS letter of determination. Or narrative elements like qualifications of the personnel, the problem statement, uh, population to serve, and uh, budgets. So the sixth reason why um, grant-readiness is so important is that it gets your grant team on the same page very fast, and electronic versions of documents can be uploaded to the cloud right now, and it allows for quick and easy access by select grant team members. Now, you don't have to have everybody, but but putting together a proposal, we had five people working on that project turnkey. And so having that information available in the cloud gets a a team on the same page. So in review, um, being grant ready is important for six main reasons. One, it's the best practice in the nonprofit sector. Two, it allows you to access your capacity and then build your capacity faster. Three, there's no more waiting until the last minute. Four, you will be ready for fast turnarounds. Five, you collect what funders want to see. And six, it gets your grant team on the same page very fast. So now let's take a look at the Grant Ready Challenge and what the steps are to take uh, to complete the, the Grant Ready Challenge. Step number one is to collect hard um, copies or electronic copies of key documents for your organization. So what you see here, um, some of these documents like the Articles of Incorporation, your bylaws, your IRS Form 990, and your IRS Letter of Determination will probably be easier and faster for you to collect than the documents that are italicized like the audits and and your your policies, your various policies. So, in fact, I suggest that you collect the italicized items over time, create a plan for doing that. But but don't let collecting them stop you from getting started right away and collecting the other items. The second step in the process is to organize and file the documents you collected in step one into six primary folders and two bonus folders that I'll share with you on this particular video. So the six folders are governance, financial, legal, narrative elements, grants approved, and funder prospects. 
So let's take a look at each of these folders one by one, and you'll see an example here of the checklist. And if you want to get this, the slides and the checklist, this is where you complete the survey after you watch the video, and you can get a copy of, of this. Complete the survey, and then it gives you um, opportunity to download the um, slides and the checklist here. So um, on the left, you're going to see a list of common policies. Now, they are in italics um, because they may take you and your agency some time to collect and approve them for your organization. One tip is don't wait to take the challenge until you've collected these to help you. Uh, in the description below, you're going to find a link um, to help you uh, collect these, and it provides policy templates that I developed um, with the Alliance for Nevada Nonprofits when I was the executive director between 2010 and 2015. And you can simply uh, download those Word documents. We, we set it up so nonprofits um, in Nevada, but any state that you're in, you can download those documents. And a policy is an organization's official position on a particular topic. And instead of going through each of those, I just suggest that you take a look at those policies and, and start to uh, develop those and get those approved for your organization. Uh, your charter and bylaws, um, this is included um, on many nonprofit sites, but uh, or it's not, I'm sorry, it's not included in many nonprofit sites, but it, it is by some. Your annual report um, is a best practice and have that on your website as well. So all these items that are have a green asterisk next to it, these are the types of documents that are helpful to include and a lot of nonprofits put on their public disclosures page on their website. And then uh, your board of directors, um, uh, the list, up-to-date list, as well as terms. And the reason why there's an asterisk next to term is that um, it's a best practices, and we discovered this in Nevada where an a, um, assemblywoman, Kirkpatrick, was trying to get information about nonprofits and their board members, but couldn't find it on their website. So um, she uh, actually passed Assembly Bill uh, 242, which requires anybody from the Department of Health and Human Resources uh, who, who are getting money from the State Department uh, to have that. But I've included that here because I think it's just a good practice for us to get, you know, start, start putting into effect is that just put the end dates of the board members. So maybe that's December 2021, December 2022, December 2023, or, or e even in the future so that you have those end dates as well for people to find uh, quickly. So let's take a look at the specific documents for folder number two, and this is financial. So uh, annual operating budget, according to grantspace.org, for some small nonprofits with just one program, the proposal budget um, and the organizational budget might be the same. But for larger nonprofits, an organization-wide operating budget accounts for everything the nonprofit spends um, or, or plans to carry out, evaluate and administer in all of its programs, and then you might have a, a program-specific budget as well. Now, IRS Form 990 or 990 PF if you're a private foundation or 990 EZ if you're under um, 50000 a year or 990N if you're under 50000 as well, and that's also called the, the postcard. But um, like the IRS letter of determination, the IRS also wants you to provide this information when anyone asks for it. So this is something that you might as well put on your website. And, um, and then as far as um, sales tax exemption, that is, in the majority of the states, they have some sort of sales tax exemption for nonprofits, except Alaska, Delaware, Montana, New Hampshire, and Oregon. And the key 
to earning a sales, uh, sales tax exemption document like the letter is, is to find out the process in your state and to get, you know, get a copy of that. And that's something that's helpful to have, um, have uh, in your folder. Uh, probably the most, uh, one of the most commonly asked questions I get is, do um, I need to have an audit for my organization? Well, and I want to thank United Way of Northern Nevada and the Sierra and their standards of excellence, because I got this idea from them. Um, if you're above $250,000, then you should have an audit every year. If you're between one hundred dollars and 250000 then you should have a financial review by an independent CPA who follows particular standards. If you're less than 100000 then an internally produced financial statement like a profit and loss statement and balance sheet, that will work fine. And um, so those are, those are the key things. And again, the green asterisk means that those are things you might consider putting on your website. So um, we've gone through the governance, we've gone through financial, so let's take a look at the folder number three. So the legal documents are what you want to put into folder number three. The IRS letter of determination, which is one of the most commonly asked for documents that you should already have readily available um, and put it on your um, public disclosures page. And some states require you to provide um, that letter if anybody asks you for it. So I just think it makes a lot of sense to put it on your website, right? Your articles of incorporation, and this is your set of formal documents that you filed or someone filed with the state government body when you incorporated. And um, then compensation or employer identification number, your EIN number is a federal number. It's helpful to have that and um, even put that on your your, your website. Uh, compensation from the IRS, I'm not going to focus much on that just to say that your Form 990 Part uh, 7 uh, uh, has information about compensation, which is um, what they're looking at uh, related to how much, what the compensation process is and how much is paid for key employees. I wouldn't worry about that. That shows up in your 990. Let your accountant take care of that. If you're getting federal grants, then you're, you should have a profile set up with grants.gov and you should keep that updated at least once a year. You don't want to be in a position in which you want to apply for a federal grant at the last minute and you're trying to turn in the proposal and the system won't let you and it, it's been more than 12 months since you updated your profile, is when you update your profile at the last minute, the system sometimes requires you to wait for a few days before it's updated. So you don't want to miss your deadline because of that. But having your grants.gov information um, done, uh, your DUNS number is a Dun and Bradstreet number, is a unique nine-digit identifier for your business. And um, grants.gov and the federal government um, other funders as well require you to have a Duns and Bradstreet number for your business. So get that number so you have it. And then your CAGE code or your uh, CAGE stands for Commercial and Government Entity. And SAM is the System for Awards Management um, that was formerly Central uh, Contractor uh, Region or, or CCR. So these are items to put in your uh, legal folder. Now, we're going to shift a little bit here, and we're going to look at what funders want in the narratives. Uh, the three main funder types are listed there on your screen. You should see uh, government, foundations, and corporations. And if we spend time with these funder types, you'll discover that they want similar elements in their request for proposals. This is what we teach the number one grant writing format in the world, we teach in our Grant Pro 101 course, and that includes a summary or an abstract which sets the tone for your proposal. That typically doesn't have a lot of information, um, you know, but uh, it's something that you write after you've written your proposal, but, but that's really the first section typically. 
your agency introduction that presents your organization as a credible organization with a track record of success, a problem statement or need statement is usually the highest scored section of a proposal narrative, and it presents a clear and concise and well-supported statement of the problem that you are addressing with your solution. And then the solution or method section is your action plan to solve the problem. The outcomes and objectives section is a clear measurable goal that you've set for your project, like um, increasing high school graduation rates or um, uh, decreasing high school dropout rates. Those are two examples. I like the words increasing and, and uh, decreasing. Um, evaluation section that shows when and how you will measure your um, project success. The future funding section explains how the project will be sustained um, once and, and after the, the, the grant funding runs out. And then the budget includes your expenses and in-kind donations of volunteer time or donated um, goods and services. So this is the top uh, grant writing format in the world and what we cover in our Grant Pro 1 and 101 course. So what can you collect as far as uh, uh, regarding the narrative elements up front? Um, if, if you were to hire someone uh, like uh, from one of our classes or, or a consultant uh, from grant, a GPA or uh, somebody's grant uh, professional certi certification, if you can, it will require less of their time and it'll save you a lot of money if you collect these elements that they can use um, uh, when they're putting together your grant proposals. And so let's look at, at some of those examples, like your mission statement, a, uh, if there was a community needs assessment that was done, like an environmental scan, a focus group, or feasibility study, um, it could be studies that reflect the demographics of the special population that you're serving, any of your strategic plans, uh, maybe you have a sustainability plan, um, your impact metrics that show um, uh, how effective you're going to be, uh, staff job descriptions, staff resumes, organizational chart, um, videos, newsletters, articles, and publications. That helps with your credibility that, um, and the overall operating budget and, and program-specific budgets as well. So these are some of the things that you can collect for yourself or, or if you're going to be hiring or getting someone else to help you with the grant writing process. So um, let's move on to... Uh, a success log, and this is something that I recommend that everybody, every organization have a success log that, that, that you can put all of the information that you have on a table of grants approved. You want to put the grantee name, the name of the grant, um, the grantee name would be the or, your organization, the name of the grant, um, uh, the awarding entity who's giving the money, the dollar amount, the date and year of the award, and then include in this folder copies of your proposals, the funded ones and, and, um, and the unfolded uh, funded ones. Now, uh, folder, so uh, uh, folder number six is specifically about the grant funders who are prospects, who are potential grant uh, funders for your organization in which you want to submit a proposal. And the, uh, the main funder types are here, foundations, uh, corporations, government agencies, and I've added civic organizations here, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. So um, I suggest, and as some of our grant professional certified experts suggest that you have a list of foundations with 30 who give 30 or more grants annually in your state. This means it's a more competitive process than with a foundation that just has a few, doesn't have much assets, and maybe only gives uh, you know one or two or a few uh, a few grants. And you want to have the profile and the deadlines and guidelines for those foundations. Civic organizations uh, like the uh, Kiwanis, Club, um, the Rotary Club, the Lions Club are, are all great um, uh, organizations doing great things in the world, but a lot of them don't have a lot of assets. So you want to know 
specific organizations in your uh, geographic area that have assets and making a list of those. Um, again, these are all in italics, so you're not going to get it right away, but something you should think about doing. Now, corporations in your geographic area, one of the changes and trends is to look at a Google map, create a Google map with all the corporations in your geographic area. It makes it super easy to find them. And it's probably some of the most up-to-date information as well. And then government, local agencies, state agencies, and federal agencies uh, in your particular field. Now, the bonus that in this section is, is sample funded proposals. Now, from the perspective of these funders, finding out if they have a well-written proposal that um, has been funded in the past and they're willing to give that to you. And I found my experience is that every time I've asked, I've always gotten a copy of a uh, sample funded proposal. So if you have those from these funders, it's helpful to put that in this particular section. Now, the two bonus folders, bonus uh, folder number seven and number eight, we're going to focus first on, on number seven, which is uh, guidestar.org. Um, I... Every single, um, every single nonprofit in the United States that has a 501c3 status with the IRS can be found at on um, guidestar.org. Now, this is where private donors and, and individuals and foundations go to check you out. So you might as well claim your GuideStar profile and submit the documents that you're already collecting as part of your grant ready challenge. And when you're approved, you could add a bronze, silver, gold, or platinum seal of transparency to your website. So here's some examples. The bronze seal, take your mission statement, your contact details, donation information, leader information, and um, then a silver to get your silver. You're going to have program information some of your branding, like your logo, website, and social media. Um, gold seal is uh, financial information, your board chair, leadership, demographics. And platinum is your strategic plan, at least one metric demonstrating the results. And, and then all of these, like platinum, requires the level before. And then sil a gold requires silver and, and so forth. So it's these are great um, free um, uh, logos uh, you can basically put on your website and you can add adds, uh, transparency and credibility to your organization. I think you're collecting the information anyway, so you might as well um, uh, use it and, and, um, and, and get those uh, documents from, from GuideStar.org. That's a great service, by the way. Um, now, the eighth Thing, those green dots, if you are the green asterisk you remember throughout the presentation, that has a um, all of those here. I've just put a list of those that you can collect. And again, they're in, in italics because it may take you longer to pull those together. But I've, I've used an example here for one of my clients, Opportunity Alliance Nevada, and they have a public disclosures page. And so I just put here you can see they've got the mission statement, they've got the board, they've got reports, they've got the IRS Form 990, letter of determination, the uh, letters, uh, uh, articles of incorporation, bylaws, policies, financials, and their employment identification number. All of that is really easy for people to, to have. And they've also included on the website the gold uh, seal. They have gold seal of, of transparency. So um, just as a, we're wrapping up now, um, and uh, just a reminder to finish the challenge. Um, if you finish the challenge, then uh, you have a chance to win a free consult um, with an assessment of your grant readiness, which is a $250 value. You get a free um, access uh, to a $25,000 proposal written by one of our students you could access a limited edition grant readiness through ring binder and a scholarship for one of our Grants Academy online classes. So simply collect and file the documents from the checklist, except the italicized ones. And the, uh, the action steps reminder is just collect and file the documents from the checklist, checklist except for the italicized ones. And to get the slides with the checklist, please complete the survey and the survey is in the description below. 
So um, that's the next thing I suggest that you do. Uh, take the survey to get the slides and thank you for joining me. And I really hope that this has been helpful. Leave us a comment below. Um, let us know what you liked about the, the, the presentation. Complete the survey so you can get the slides and move forward. And I hope that you can uh, take and complete uh, the Grant Readiness Challenge. And best of luck to you. And um, bye for now.